Have you ever wondered why so many films slow down in the second or third act? Why a character can get caught up in something really exciting that just builds and builds, the plot moving like a well-oiled machine, and then all of a sudden it just stops? The basic narrative structure suggests after the exposition and inciting incident, a constant rising action until the climax. But many stories, not just movies, insert another important and often overlooked step before the climax, the sabbatical. This is when a character briefly escapes whatever he was caught up in and takes a leave of absence. Something happens to break the momentum and the character is given a chance to reflect on the situation. Unfortunately, many people see this as nothing more than a break in the flow of the film, almost a flaw. They don't realize its significance on the weight of the film as a whole. Imagine this. You take one step down a hill and you're immediately set into motion. As the incline gets steeper and steeper, you naturally go faster and faster to the point where, if you stop suddenly, you'd likely fall and break your legs. Luckily, this hill has a short but needed break in its incline, allowing you time to breathe and slow down before continuing to the finish. Just like a person running down a hill, a story gains momentum and must, for a little while, take a breath before jumping back on track in order to avoid a jarring conclusion. But it's not just a matter of pacing. Whenever the sabbatical happens, the character is usually left a situation in which he was naive, at least to a degree, and as he looks back at all that's happened, he grows wiser. This is generally where the internal conflict is resolved, which enables the character to solve the external conflict, usually at the climax. A perfect example for this, as cheesy as it seems, would be the generic romantic comedy. Pretty much every film in this cookie-cutter genre follows the same basic formula. After a lot of fun together, the couple splits up before realizing they really did love each other and deciding to get back together. But it's in this time while the characters are broken up that they're given time to reflect on their actions and realize where they went wrong. As you could probably infer, the sabbatical story structure extends to stories far more emotionally complex than a romantic comedy. For instance, in the film Whiplash, Miles Teller's character Andrew finds himself caught up in a psychologically damaging situation, but since his life goal is to succeed in music, he ignores the trauma and goes along with the abuse inflicted upon him by J.K. Simmons Fletcher, which was perhaps a naive move. After a meltdown, however, he leaves the band and enters the sabbatical. There's a great deal of thought-provoking content throughout his time at the band, but it's really when he leaves that the most thinking occurs, both for the characters and the audience. Now that we're given the situation and its repercussions, we really have a chance to weigh the options, and we find ourselves in a rather interesting moral debate. The only way to succeed is to essentially sacrifice your humanity, but at the same time, is success worth it if you've given up some of the basic aspects of life that make it enjoyable and worth living at all? Of course, the sabbatical ends and he re-enters the situation with more insight, ready to resolve the conflict now that he's solidified his beliefs, but the audience has now been given a great deal of food for thought that will linger with them throughout the course of the film and long afterward. The sabbatical is really a simple topic, there's not much to analyze about it as an abstract concept, but the fact that it so often goes overlooked is unfortunate, to say the least. Even if the end of the film is entirely predictable, not a single surprise in store, as long as the film can pull up a proper sabbatical, spontaneity is unnecessary, because although a film should make us feel emotion and suspense and whatnot, this concept adds more emotion through means of a conscious moral debate. So the next time you watch a film, the standout moments may be Fletcher's absurd lines, I will fuck you like a pig, the dehumanizing tempo slap, the amazing drum solo that solidifies Andrew's moral position and shows off his undeniable skill, but the scenes that give the conclusion its payoff, gives the audience a discussion, allows us to really ponder, are the scenes that are usually passed off as slow third act fat. Next time, think about why the film has taken its time to pause and reflect, and ask yourself what the film is asking you. You'll appreciate the pacing more, knowing the necessity of the sabbatical. But more importantly, you'll leave the theater with a heightened sense of wisdom and fulfillment. Thank you.